Okay, so based on the fact that we've learned that we can determine the values of the six trig functions, okay, for real numbers on the unit circle uh, using the terminal point associated with that real number, okay, then we can determine the values of the signs of the trig functions based on the quadrant where the angle or the real number uh, lies, okay? So, in quadrant one, all six trig functions will always be positive, okay? So if the real number is between zero and pi over two, or if the angle is between zero and 90 degrees, then all six trig functions have to be positive, okay? In quadrant two, <clears throat> the sine and the cosecant are the only two that can be positive. The other four will be negative, okay? And the reason why, remember, sine is always gonna be the y coordinate, well, the y coordinate's positive in quadrant two, and cosecant is the reciprocal, okay, of that y coordinate, uh, which is always gonna be positive in quadrant two. All the other trig functions have the x value as one part of the ratio, and x is negative in quadrant two. So these other four trig functions have to be negative in quadrant two, okay? In quadrant three, tangent and cotangent are the positive trig functions. The other four have to be negative, okay? And the reason why that's the case, okay? Um, X and Y are both negative in quadrant three, and tan and cotan, or tangent and cotangent, are the only two ratios that have both Y and X as part of the ratio, okay? So you're dividing two negative numbers here, or you're dividing two negative numbers here, which gives you a positive value, okay? So in quadrant three, tangent and cotangent are positive, all right? In quadrant four, okay, only cosecant and, excuse me, cosine and secant are positive because they have x as part of their ratio, and x is positive in quadrant four. The other four trig functions, sine, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent would be negative here because they either have just the y-coordinate as part of the ratio, which is negative in quadrant four, or it's a quotient, a ratio, of both y and x, where only one of those would be negative, okay? So in quadrant one, all six trig functions would be positive. In quadrant two, only sine and cosecant would be positive. In quadrant three, only tangent and cotangent are positive. And in quadrant four, uh, only cosine and secant are positive, okay? So let's use that information, okay? And we're gonna see uh, from this given information, so sine is negative, and cosine is negative. That's what these two mean. Cosine is less than zero, which means it's negative. Cosine is less than zero, which means it's negative. So we want to find the quadrant in which the terminal point for T uh, must lie based on that information, okay? Well, sine is negative in two quadrants, okay? Well, sine is positive in quadrants one and two, so sine would be negative. Sine would be negative in quadrants three and four. Okay, now cosine's negative. Well, cosine is positive in quadrants one and four, so then cosine has to be negative and then in quadrants two and three, okay? Now it says and here, so in which quadrant is sine negative and cosine negative? Well, the only time that's the place is gonna be in quadrant three, okay? So, so T must be in quadrant three, or that terminal point must lie in quadrant three, all right? So that's how you can determine where the value uh, T falls and where the terminal point must be because of that uh, using this concept of where the trig functions are positive and where they're negative. So let's take a look at the second example here, okay? Tangent of T is negative, okay? So tangent's gonna be negative in quadrants two and quadrants four, all right? Uh, then we've got cosecant is positive. So cosecant is going to be positive, just like sine in quadrants one and two. Okay, so where do both of these things occur? Okay, where is tangent negative and where is cosecant positive? Well, uh, they have quadrant two in common there, so that means that T must be in quadrant two. Okay, or the terminal point lies in quadrant two. So X would be uh, positive, excuse me, negative, and Y would be positive. All right. Let's look at one more example of this. Cotangent is negative. Well, just like tangent above, cotangent is going to be negative in quadrants two and four. Okay, where is secant positive? Well, secant's just like cosine. It's positive in quadrants one and four. Okay, 
Um, so we're kind of looking for the overlap there. Cotangent's negative in quadrant four. Secant's positive in quadrant four. So that means T must be in quadrant four. Okay. So that's how you can determine um, which quadrant T must lie in, where the terminal point lies, uh, based on the fact that sine and cosine are positive in quadrants one and two. Tangent and cotangent are positive in quadrants one and three. And cosine and secant are positive in quadrants one and four.